all starts with a square, any size of square. When you draw a diagonal like this and make a square from it, or square it, this new square is bigger by one unit in area. The square root of its area, which is two, is equal to the length of its sides. This is a root two square. Now, if you draw a rectangle with the length of that new square and the height of the original square, you get a root two rectangle. The same process of using the diagonal is then applied to each subsequent rectangle, which makes the next rectangle. There is no set rule for which root to use. David Fincher likes to use a root 6. Stranger Things uses a 2 to 1 ratio, which is a root 4. And there are exceptions to the root rectangle rules, like her. There's a long list of aspect ratios used in film and TV production. We'll limit ourselves to these. A 239 can be framed with a root 6. A 2 to 1 and 185 can be framed with a root 4. A 133 can be framed with a root 2. The root only determines the size of the frame. Now in any rectangle, you can draw these following lines. This is the Baroque diagonal, and its opposite is the sinister diagonal. You can divide the frame horizontally and vertically, and then add the reciprocals, which are perpendicular lines to the Baroque and sinister diagonals. With this basic grid, you can start designing your scenes by determining rules like the female character holds her ground on the left side of the screen, and she only goes to the other side of the frame when she's interested in the male character or when she's on his good side. When a character is holding an object with their hands, that object is shown in a specific area of the frame. This one's a stretch, but notice how she leans towards the sinister diagonal and the main character is on the Baroque diagonal. Her hand, or a call from temptation, moves along the sinister diagonal. So this could show how temptation is bringing the main character out of balance psychologically. You can also use these guidelines to create a shared definition of different shot types and establish a consistent amount of space characters take up in a frame based on the type of shot. In a martial arts scene, establishing a line for a body part and then violently changing it to another line can give a more effective sensation of the actual bone breaking than using any other type of shot. The idea behind using dynamic symmetry is not for it to be used in every single shot of a movie. It is merely a guideline that filmmakers can choose to use if it can add something to the story that they want to tell. Intuition, experimentation, and happy accidents also play a very important role in deciding how to compose a shot and in how a scene is designed. Hey everybody, thank you for watching and if you'd like to learn more about these types of things, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, bye bye.
Sniff, the spastic, the abrom, nerdless, galtu, vin, nish, thou were forget, he'd have your bayet, 